first of all, I'd like to say shalom to our listeners. Uh, we had a really interesting um, lesson uh, that we're going to be teaching today. It's going to be dealing with um, Satan and his control over you. A lot of folks don't realize that Satan is actually controlling them. You say, well, how can they be controlling them and them not know it? Well, he's a deceiver. He used the methods of deceiving us to get control over us. He used lies and, and deceit. Um, how did he get this control over us? I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 14. You can read. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from to the ground, which thou didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven, and exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit above. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds, and will be like the Most High. Okay. Uh, the scripture in the next verse it says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay. Now let's look at this at this um, verse here. It gives you, um, it called him Lucifer. Okay. Son of the morning. Okay. Um, Satan, as you know, was once an angel. Um, when he sinned, he was then cast out of heaven and was called Satan. But we notice if you look up his name, um, notice he has son, it calls him the son of the morning. And if you look up his name, Hillel. Hillel. And it actually means morning star. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Why is, why is that interesting? Somebody tell me. <laughs> it's well. like a reflection of the sun, and then something else is very interesting that I'm kind of nervous to say. Go ahead and say it. I want you to say it. <laughs> but they call Jesus the bright and morning star. Isn't that something? So Yahshua is supposed to be the bright and morning star. So how is it we got Lucifer here is called the morning star and you got um, Yahshua is supposed to be the bright morning star. Let's find that scripture where it calls... That's why I said Jesus <laughs> because <laughs> I felt a little nervous about calling Yahshua that. But um, Why? It's in the scripture. I know, I know. <laughs> but I was just thinking about Jesus being something that was handed to us by yeah. the Catholics. Right. You know? His image, his name, all of that. Morning star is actually um, in the scriptures though it refers to Yahshua as the morning star. Yeah. So let's find that for you real quickly here. It's in Revelations chapter 22. Revelations chapter 22 verse 16. Um, Sophia, I'm going to have you read it. Please read it loudly so the camera can pick up your voice. Chapter 22, <clears throat> verse 16. I, Yahshua, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of the spring of David and the bright and morning star. Okay, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So here you have Yahshua actually saying he's the bright and morning star. So now you got Lucifer in the Old Testament saying he's the morning star, or the scripture saying that he's the morning star, and then you got Yahshua testifying that he's the morning star. So what's going on here? Anybody have a clue? Did somebody interpret something wrong, you think? Think so? Well, I believe that Satan has always wanted to ascend. Notice he made the confession right. that he wanted to ascend to the throne. That's right. Okay. And so I believe that it's possible 
he's saying that he wants to take the place of the true bright morning something? star. Isn't that something? That's pretty neat what she said there, and that's true too, because he actually says it in that passage. If you look at that passage, Satan actually makes the statement, and he says, I will ascend above where? What did he say in that chapter? Let me go back to it. It says... <clears throat> Above the heights of the clouds. Above the heights of the clouds. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above what? The stars, the stars of God. Now you got to ask yourself. Okay, let's look at this passage. The stars of God. You hear that? The stars of God. I want you to think about that statement. The stars of God. Now, in the book of Enoch, I want to share this with you here, what I got. I came across this and I said, hmm, there's something to the stars of God. I'm going to show you what this, what's going on here. Okay. If we go to the book of Enoch, and I'm going to have to go to this. I don't know if you all don't have it with you here, but I got it here on the screen. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, if we go to the book of Enoch, the 18th chapter for those that are listening. Uh, verse 14 through 16 and listen to this carefully what it says here it says and I beheld seven stars now hear that I beheld seven stars and okay she wants to talk now you want, you want to teach the class huh <laughs> okay Pay attention, y'all. It says, and there, and, and there I beheld seven stars like great blazing mountains and like spirits entreating me. Then the angel said, this place until the consummation of heaven and earth will be the prison of the stars and the host of heaven. The stars which roll over fire are those which transgress the commandment of God before their time arrived. For they came not in their proper season. Therefore was he offended with them and bound them unto the period of the consummation of their crimes in the, in the, in the secret year. So how is it we got stars that's transgressing against the Most High? Hmm. So are these planets up in the sky? Or what are they? These stars. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, that's the Book of Enoch, though. Because a lot of people don't like to look at the Book of Enoch. I got one more for you. Turn to Job. Chapter 38. And the Borea, yeah, I'm going to let you read this one here. Chapter 38, verse 5 through 7. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line up on it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors, when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? Hmm. Morning stars sang together? Mm -hmm. So then there was more than one morning star. How about that? A whole host of morning stars. So when we see Satan being called a morning star, and now you see Yahshua being called a morning star, there was more than one morning star. For it says the morning stars did what? They sang together. They sang together. I'm going to show you something here, <laughs> what this is all about. It's pretty, pretty interesting. I came across this and did a little research on it, and I, I was really... Amazed at some of the things that turned up, but let's look at this here again. Okay, in Job, it said, "What verse was that again that I gave you?" Um, was it four through eight? 
Yeah, let me bring this back up. Uh, five through seven, okay. Five through seven. Okay, five through seven. Now, notice it says here, uh, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. So you got the sons of God and you got the morning stars that sang together. <clears throat> okay. Now, if you go to your Hebrew and you look up this word, morning stars, I'll show you what you have here. Okay. You have a Hebrew word, the word for star is kokab. It means a prince. How about that? See, Satan was a prince. He was one of these morning stars, you see. And Yahshua is the prince, you see. So it's not that Satan is, is it's not that it's a, bo it's a bad title to call Yahshua the morning star because Satan once was a morning star. He's not anymore. <laughs> Although the scripture makes this clear, it says that he can transform himself into what? An angel of light. An angel of light. So he can make himself appear to be that morning star again. Okay, one of his um, tricks is is to deceive, to make himself appear to be righteous when he's actually wicked. So now that we've un uncovered that little mystery about the morning stars, there were plenty morning stars back in in in, 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 the, in the heaven. Now there are plenty morning stars. These are angels. These are titles for certain princes that are in the heavens, okay? Um, and the sons of, of God, you know in the scriptures when it refers to the sons of God, it's referring to angels also, okay? So that's what that passage was talking about, okay? Now, how did Satan get control over us? Well, he does it through indoctrination. Okay? He starts out in our life early when we're young, indoctrinating us with all of these different teachings and beliefs. And then when we get older, he has something that he can work with. Think about this here. Think about when Satan was in the garden, when he came and he um, tempted Adam and Eve. He tempted Eve, the scripture says. What did he tempt her with? Knowledge. Isn't that something? He tempted her with knowledge. She saw the knowledge and she became thirsty for that knowledge. She wanted to know. Okay, what does Satan use now? Same thing. Same thing. Knowledge, exactly. So mm -hmm. we're, you, you, a person will say, well, wait a minute. we supposed to know. Yes, we are supposed to know. We're supposed to know uh, many things. Um, the scripture says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So we are supposed to know. But there's a certain knowledge that the scripture speaks of that many don't touch on, okay? It's two different knowledge that we come across in the scripture. You have gnosis and you have what is called epigenosis, okay? Gnosis is just basic knowledge. Knowledge from uh, being taught, knowledge from going to school, and they, uh, they teach you these things in school. And then you have another knowledge that's called epigenosis. Okay, epigenosis, epi is like a superative. It kind of, um, um, it, it exaggerates, so to speak, um, the knowledge. Epigenosis means full discernment. You have gnosis and then you have epigenosis, okay? When the scripture says um, um, knowledge puff up, it was actually referring to gnosis. Because you have many people, they dive into the Bible, they um, go to seminaries and colleges, and they get all of this education to become doctors of this and that. They get all this knowledge, and what do they do? They get puffed up. And you can tell they puffed up. They walk around swaggering, and, and they get just so really puffed up because they really just have knowledge. But they don't have epigenosis. Now, when the scripture says, ever learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth, that knowledge is epigenosis. Look it up in the scriptures. If you look up the Greek words, that knowledge is epigenosis. Mm -hmm. 
ever learning, but never coming into the knowledge. How else can you be ever learning? That means they're always in their Bible. They're always studying the Word, always reading this and going to college and getting all this education, but never coming into the full discernment of what those things mean. Why? Because we're talking about epigenosis of the knowledge that you experience. You see, I can take a person and I can literally teach him how to drive without putting him in a car. Show him with video and lessons that you steer the wheel and you do this and you do all of that. And they don't know, oh yeah, I know how to turn it on. I know you hit the gas and you know how to hit the brake and all of that stuff. But they don't know how to drive. Put them in a car, they probably have an accident the first day. We're talking about... Um, uh, actually having that experience. Hands you see, hands-on experience is more like it, exactly. Epigenosis is like that, okay? When Paul talked about um, that he prayed that the Most High give you revelation and the knowledge of in him, he's referring to epigenosis. He's not talking about gnosis, you see. This is a knowledge that you only get through revelation, to get knowledge without revelation will only puff you up. This is why we need the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, HaKadosh, to what? Guide us. It says, the scripture guide says, the Holy truth. Spirit, do what? Lead us and guide us into all truth. To all truth. truth, that's right. Lead us and guide us into all truth. So then we can't just dive into the scriptures and dive and get this, get that. This is why we have so many uh, religions, so many different teachings out there. Now, let's look at something. In the Old Testament, Satan's trick in the Old Testament because the Most High was coming forth, revealing itself to his people, and Satan was seated as the Most High chosen of people, Israel, and he was their God. So Satan said, okay, 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 I got to put a stop to this God thing. So let's make many gods. Okay? So we're going to have a lot of different gods. The word God is actually Elohim. So we're going to have many Elohims, which is mighty ones. Many mighty ones. That's why Yah is called the Most High God, or the Most High Elohim. He's the Most High God. You understand? So Satan said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all these different gods. So they kind of trip people up so they won't um, 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 find a real God. Got to trip these people up, okay? So that's why you, when you look at Yah's name, his name is actually Yah. Folk think his name is Yahweh. You got some people say Hallelujah Yahweh. No, his name isn't Hallelujah Yahweh. His name is actually Yah. But he was separate himself from all the other gods by saying Yahweh. Yahweh means actually Yah, the self-existent one. In other words, I, these other gods are self-existent. They were created by you all. Formed by the hands of man. That's right. Formed by the hands of man. So then Yahweh, he said, he said, I am Yahu, the self-existent one. That's right. I came of my own self. You see, no one created me. Okay, so Yah stood out from all these other guys by performing and doing things. You see, these other guys, man, can't really come to know these other guys, but you can come to know Yah. But how do you come to know Yah? You got so many different religions, you got so many different teachings. Well, I'm going to give you an example of this, and I want you to think about what I'm saying here. I know I've said this to you before, but I want you to hear this. Okay. Let's say that everything that you know about me was in a book. Okay? You never met me personally. Never talk to me. You never heard any word come from my mouth. Okay? You never met me face to face. But everything that you that can be known of me is in a book. Okay? So here's the book about me. Here's my book here. Let's say this is my book about me. Okay? Now, one day you come along, you see this book about me, and you see that my name on the cover of the book. And you say, oh, this is Yahoo, okay. Oh, let me read this about Yahoo. And you open the book, you start to read about me from when I was born, and my name was actually Eric, and 
you go and you read all of this stuff of how I grew up and who my mama was and, and my brothers and where I w was raised and everything that I believe in and then I did I like to do and my likes, dislikes and things that I like to watch and just my talents and everything was in this book. You read this whole book and you walk away, you see pictures of me as I grew up, and you see pictures of me now, how I look, right? But you never met me, okay? Then one day, you look outside your window and you see me walking by your house. And you say, I know him. That's, that's, um, that's Yahoo. There, there he is right there. So you get the Bible, you get the book, should I say, and you, you run out there and you say, Yahoo, hey, Yahoo, hey, the, hey, it's me over here, hey, Yahoo. And what am I going to do? I'm going to look at you and say, uh, I don't know you. Well, who this dude calling me over here? <laughs> I don't know you. You never met me. You never convers You never had a conversation with me. Have you ever heard anything from me? Have you ever heard me speak to you? You don't know me. You see, that's the knowledge that I'm referring to as gnosis. You see, plenty of people are coming to know Yah through this only. Okay? doesn't know them. You don't know. If you only know him through this, then you don't know him. Because he is a person. Okay? In the Old Testament, the Most High spoke to Moses. In the Old Testament, he spoke to Joshua. He spoke to the Old the Patriots. Or even in the New Testament, when you read the scripture, you read the book of Acts, he's speaking to his apostles and telling them where to go and what not to where not to go and what to do and what not to do. He's guiding and speaking. He's always speaking and dealing with his people. You see, now this is the kind of knowledge we supposed to have. This is why you see many of the of the believers today, they look at the scriptures and they look at the healings and all the power that's going on in the scripture and they say what? Uh, that was back then. That ain't now. You see, that's why they make those kind of statements. Because they are, are, are thinking to themselves, well, I know I know him. I know I don't see these things in my life, but I know I know him. Well, why don't you see these things in your life then? Do you really know him? Do you hear him? Is he, does he speak to you? Huh? Is he moving in your life some kind of a way? I expect to see it's a normal life to if, if you are born of Yahshua, it's normal to have a life like the apostles. Quit trying to put that in the scriptures and say, oh, that's just the life of them, of the apostles. No, that's the life of every regenerated believer that's been born again, born of the Spirit, born of the, of the Ruach HaKadosh. And that are walking in his spirit. That's the life of everyone that's born again. You're supposed to be experiencing these things. Don't it say in the scripture, these signs, great, greater signs than these shall ye do? Mm -hmm. Huh? Don't it say that? And he that believe in my in my name, these signs shall follow them. Doesn't it say those things in the scripture? Mm -hmm. It says it. So you should be experiencing these things. All of us should be experiencing. It's normal. That's a normal believer's life. And what are some we, of those signs? Yeah, yeah, what are some of those signs? Huh? What are they? Speaking in tongues. Laying on of hands and healing. Huh? Casting out devils. Miracles. Period. You should be experiencing these things in your life. If you're not experiencing them, something is wrong. What does the scripture say in, in um, I'm going to go, go here for a moment. Let's look at this scripture in Romans. Turn to Romans. I know I've kind of got off the subject a little bit, but I want you to look at this. I want you to get what's being said here. Look, look at Romans chapter 6. Okay. Chapter 6, um, verse 1. We're going to read starting at verse 1. Eli, you can read verse 1 through 5. Chapter 6. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that, may, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not 
that so many of us were baptized unto Yahshua, were baptized unto his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ, like as Yahshua was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so shall, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Okay. Now, so then you got to ask yourself this question here, right? So, if you're not in the likeness of his resurrection, then you must not have been in the likeness of his death. No. Okay? Now, what does that say to you then? That says this one thing here. It says, see, that's what born again is, is about. You, you're born again. So how do you get born again? You don't just be alive and then, oh, I'm born again. No, you have to die. You see, that death must come first. You can't have one without the other. There's no such thing as a resurrection without a death. No such thing as an ascension without a resurrection. No such thing as a death without uh, a burial without death. You see, there is a phase in, the, in which the Most High takes us. We all are supposed to go through this phase. That phase is what? Bury, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Now he said, if we've been in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So if we were in the likeness of his death, we should also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Okay. Now, so there's one of, one of two things going on if we don't experience that power. Okay. Either we've been born again. Well, either you haven't been born again. Okay. And that's the reason why you're not experiencing these things in your life. Or there's only one other thing. Okay? Look at the next verse here. It goes back to what we're talking about here. The very next verse says what? Knowing this. Knowing what? That our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay, now. Listen to what he says. He says, knowing this. In other words, you got to know this. Back to that knowledge. See, this ain't something that you can just walk around and say, oh yeah, I know. No, no, you got to really know this thing. You got to know what? That you were crucified. And there's no more you. What, what did Yahshua say? Not Yahshua, Yah, uh, Shahu. What did he say? This is Paul. What did he say? He said, I die daily. What are you dying daily to? Self. He said, I am acknowledging that I am dying daily. I am crucified with Yahshua. Ain't that what he said? I am crucified with Yahshua. Nevertheless, not, uh, no, no, he said, I am crucified with Yahshua. Nevertheless, yet, yet, not yet not I, but Yahshua liveth in me. Mm -hmm. So he's literally saying that. It's no more me here. It's Yahshua that lives in me. So then when we are planted in the likeness of his death and we are reckoning that we are dead, that we are literally dead, which is a, a when I say literally, I'm not talking about like your flesh dead, but you are as dead to sin as a dead man. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Just like a dead man is in the ground, you are that dead to sin. But you got to know it. <laughs> you got to know it. See, that's why it says knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Why you got to know that your old man is crucified? Who is your old man? Huh? Somebody tell me, who is your old man? Your old habits. Yeah, your old habits, your old you. It's you. It's literally you. Okay? You got to know that your old man is crucified with who? Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Why must you know? You got to know because you can't walk in that newness of life. Or that newness of life with power unless you know that thing. You got to know it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to share something with you. Go to Joshua chapter 1 and look at this. I want to share this with you. In order to be in the likeness of his resurrection, we have to experience that death. That's right. You must experience that death. No resurrection without no resurrection without the death and the burial. 
Uh, what's the burial uh, symbol of? What's the burial symbol of? See, get this here about burial. Let me share this with you about burial, okay? What happens if you don't bury a dead body? It's going to rot. It's going to stink. What else? It can even be disease. Cause infections. It can cause infections. If somebody gets in touch, that's what scripture in the Torah speaks against touching dead things. You see? Dead bodies and stuff like that. You ain't supposed to touch them. Touch them, you see? Because of the of, of the, 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 the deadness of it, you see? That's why those things need to be buried. So now you come to Yahshua and 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 and, and, you, and you get baptized and, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So then that old you is dead. So you gotta bury that, that old you. You gotta bury that old you six feet under because if you don't, he gonna be getting right back up, taking control of your life again. Yes. Smelling. That's Next right. Get on you and you. That's right. So all of the negative stuff that you had once had in your life will come back if you don't bury that stuff. You see, that's why many, many brothers out here, they had problems out here uh, chasing after women, whoremonger, right? And then they, they come to Yahshua and they get saved and what do they do? They end up watching uh, pornography and getting all off into lust and they can't seem to stop all of that stuff. It's because they haven't learned how to walk in Yahshua. They haven't learned how to bury those dead things. But I'm going to show you what's important here. I want you to go to Joshua chapter 1. And let's look at Joshua chapter 1. Now this is something the Most High revealed to me years ago. I want you to see this. Joshua chapter 1. Sophia, I want you to read verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of Yah, it came to pass that Yah spake unto Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over to this Jordan, thou, thou and all this people unto the unto the land which I give to them, even the ch children of Israel. Okay, now, in this passage it was going on is basically Moses went up in the mount, and you know the story, it was time for Moses to die, basically. And Moses went up in the mount to die, basically. Okay, and he did die. Joshua and the rest of Israel were sitting down waiting because they didn't know what was going on. They knew that he was going up to die, but they didn't know what to do. They were just literally sitting there waiting. Okay? The Most High had to come and tell Joshua that Moses was dead because Moses did because Joshua didn't know it. Because, get this, Joshua could not arise up and go possess the land until he knew that Moses was dead. He had to get the confirmation from Yah. <laughs> Same with you. You got to know that your old man is dead. You cannot walk in the newness of power, in, in the Ruach, in the newness of life, except you realize that that old man is dead. You cannot. It says, arise, go over to Jordan, possess the land. The land isn't for the old man. Moses couldn't go. Only Joshua could, could go. It's funny that Yahshua is the same name as, as our Savior. <laughs> Yahshua, the new man. Isn't that amazing? Same name. You see? So this is actually something spiritual here that the Most High is trying to reveal to us that we want to experience the power. We want to experience acts and, and the scriptures. We want to feel this thing manifest in our life, but we got to know we're too busy getting a gnosis, and we need to experience the epigenosis. We need to come into the full discernment of the truth. You see, not just the truth, we got to come into the full discernment of it. Now, back to this knowledge thing. So then you have all of these different religions now. Everybody teaching this, teaching that, okay? Well, let me ask you this question. Some of them have the Holy Spirit, some don't. Okay? And some that have the Holy Spirit, you got to ask yourself, the Holy Spirit is supposed to lead us in all truth. Right? 
So is the Holy Spirit telling this person over here something different? And telling this one over here something different? And something different? No. The Ruach say the same thing to everyone. So basically he's going to tell the same truth he's going to tell me, he's going to tell you. Okay? Why are there so many different teachings then? Okay? Well, sometimes we lean to our own understanding. That's right. Okay? Sometimes we're not being led of the Spirit. Sometimes we're not really listening uh, for the Spirit. Matter of fact, um, it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal some of these things to us. We can't, we can't expect, you can't sit, be serious and think that you could actually read this word here and think that you know everything there is about God just from reading this word here. You can't, you can't believe that. You see, I know he's a healer. How do I know he's a healer? I've been healed. Okay, I know he's a healer because I've been healed. Okay, how many of you all have been healed that's sitting here now? Sophia has been healed. Uh, Elijah, you've been healed. Deborah Yah has been healed. Uh, Benjamin here has been healed. So we know he's a healer because we've experienced it. We don't know it just because we read it. Uh, I know the scripture says he's a healer. And therefore, when we come up against a situation where somebody needs healing, what do we do? We run right on off to the hospital somewhere and let these wicked people put their hands on you. You see, when if you had faith, if you had that epigenosis, then you would know that, oh, no, I could just go to the Most High and talk to him. I could just lay my hands on myself and get healing. You see? So, basically, the Most High is trying to get us to the place of where we come out of this ever learning and, and never coming into the knowledge of the truth. Now, Satan is clever though, because we do this when we started out talking about him. He was this angel of light. See, his deception of old, and I pay attention, okay, his deception of old was to do what? Idols, many idols to distract you, right? So then when the truth came out that the idols were just idols and, and, and people started coming away from all the idol worship stuff, so he said, okay, now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta change this around. Now I gotta do things different. People are beginning to realize that little statue ain't nothing now. You see, so now I gotta come up with religions. So that's what his next move was. Okay, now I'm gonna come up with, with tons of doctrines. You see, that's why the, 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 the scripture spoke about those in the last days giving heed to what? Seducing spirits. And what? Doctrines of devils. <laughs> Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. These are doctrines that are created by devils. You see, and then we get a hold of these doctrines and we just get to preaching them and teaching them and not really realizing that we're, we're actually pushing a doctrine of a devil. So then we have got to be led of the Spirit. we got to come into the full discernment. We have got to realize what his trick is, is deception. He uses deception, and he likes to tempt, tempt us with knowledge. But if we humble ourselves, see, gnosis puffs up. You see, epigenosis don't puff up. Okay? Epigenosis does just the opposite. It builds you. It humbles you. Mm -hmm. You see? Because only a person that's puffed up would think that he got that knowledge of his own uh, ability to search the scriptures and, and, and go to school and, and, and go to um, uh, the cemetery. <laughs> the cemetery. <laughs> Seminary. <laughs> Seminary. <laughs> exactly. So basically, yeah, yeah, think about that, you know. And you, if you, if you uh, only get your knowledge from these things and you're not seeking the most high for revelation, you got to seek for revelation. You know, uh, Shaul made that clear in the scriptures that you got to come to him for revelation. And he'll reveal these things to you. So, now, I want to show you something else here. I want you to look at Satan. Now, let's think about what he did now. He goes in, he sets up all these different doctrines, these different religions, and what happens? We are born and raised in these things. Okay? We're born and raised in all of these doctrines and teachings, right? And these things are like strongholds in our head. Okay. Now, I want to turn you on to this scripture. I want you to see this scripture here. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm starting at verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah 
to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Yah, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Mashiach. Okay, now look at this. So you mean to tell me that our weapons, the weapons that we use, the mighty weapons, we ain't talking about a gun or a sword, I'm talking about the spiritual sword, the mighty weapons of our warfare, what do he say? They're mighty through Yah, but they're not carnal. Okay? They're not carnal, but they're mighty through Yah to the pulling down of what? Name, notice what it names here. Strongholds, mm -hmm. imaginations, and thoughts. Strongholds, imaginations, and thoughts. What did Yahshua use? Huh? Remember when, when Yahshua went to T when, uh, when, when Satan went to temp? Yahshua, after he fasted 40 days, what did Satan come and use against Yahshua? The word. He used the word. He quoted scripture. <clears throat> now, how did Yahshua deal with Satan? Did he pull out a sword? <clears throat> did he get to plead the blood? <laughs> did he get to screaming, you leave here, Satan, and all? Did he get to doing all of that? Nope. What did he do? He quoted scripture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear that? He just quoted scripture. He told Satan, he said, uh, it is also written. Mm -hmm. See, Satan was quoting what was written. So Yahshua had to come back and say, it is also written. Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yah. Mm -hmm. You see, Yahshua knew how to deal with Satan. You see, Satan comes to you and he talks because he has doctrines. He, he used the word. To try to cause you to go astray. Isn't that something? So now what must we do? We got to be wise. We got to learn how to use the scripture. Use the weapons of our warfare. To, to fight against what? The thoughts, the imaginations, and the strongholds. So now, let's look at this word stronghold. What's funny is I, I when I did research on this before and I looked up the word stronghold and what's amazing is um it's a fortress it kind of makes you think about the scripture too that says resist the devil and he will flee from you yeah so how do you resist him how do you resist him you resist him with the word that's Just right like yashua did he quoted scripture we quote scripture that's right you put him in his place with the word of yah that's right mm -hmm. that's right exactly so basically mm -hmm. you do what you put the word on them. You see? You, so, that's the sword. That's the, that's the sword. Now, now, the word is the sword. That's right. The word is the sword. Now let me show you something here. Think about what I'm saying here. Okay? Um, Sophia, just try to be quiet, okay? And listen. Pay attention, y'all. Okay, now listen up. Now, he used the word. The word is the sword. Now let's say that I get up one morning and I feel something... Um, hurting in my side or something, right? And right away, I start to think and I start to say that, you know, um, man, am I getting a sickness? Am I getting a cold? Or is this something else going on? You know? So what should I do? Should I continue to entertain that thought? Or should I put the word on it? Speak against it. Speak against it. What's the word? By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I'm healed. <laughs> Y'all hear that? So instead of giving in to what you feel, you need to quote the scriptures because the scriptures is our reality. You see? So you quote, by his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. And guess what? You will be healed because it's all in you knowing. You see? So you have to, you have to, you have to uh, profess these things. You see? So now, we're fighting with our sword. We have a sword now, and we're fighting with the sword. The sword against thoughts. Thoughts where? Where are these thoughts at that you're fighting? In your own mind. This is the battlefield here. It's in your own mind. The strongholds, where are they? In your own mind. Why? Because he, he got inside your mind all those years that you grew up and he set up strongholds and, 
and, and walled cities of knowledge and building blocks of knowledge, you see? And, and, and all of this stuff, be built all this stuff up in your mind, right? And then, and, then, and then you come to know the Most High, you become born again. Now you got to pull that sword out and start tearing down all this stuff that's here. I'm going to prove something to you here. When the scripture made this statement in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Somebody read that for me. Read it loud. Chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay. Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay. If you look that word up, devices there, Satan's devices, his devices, you know what that word is? <coughs> devices. It says... Here, I have that for you. That Satan should get advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. His devices here. You look up the word devices. How about this? This word devices here, it says a perception, a, a thought. Perception and a thought. Satan's device is a perception and thought. Get this. I'm going to shock you with this one. That word device there, that same um, Greek word that's used for device there is the exact same Greek word that's used for when it says in the other passage that we read where it says um, um, casting down imaginations bringing into, bringing into captivity every thought it's the same Greek word for thought that's in this passage here as Satan's devices mm. same exact Greek word <laughs> so the weapons are against Satan's devices, which are what? Thoughts. Thought concepts of the mind. Isn't that something? Isn't it funny that there's only one weapon? If you look at the um, armor, the whole armor that we put on, there's actually only one weapon. <laughs> it's the word. Only one weapon. And we always think that, oh, that, oh man, we got to fight against Satan. So your biggest fight is actually here. You know why? Because Satan can't do nothing to you unless he can get you here. Mm -hmm. If he gets you here, he got you. Mm -hmm. So this is what we need. He can't, he can't do nothing with you. Mm -hmm. Can't do nothing with you. Think about Eve, right? When Eve was in the garden, he came and got to talking with her whatever. What if she just closed her ears? <laughs> she would have defeated Satan if she just closed put her hands over her ears. You know what I find amazing too? Uh -huh. When the scripture says, my people, yeah. about the Israelites, yeah. are destroyed for lack of gnosis. That's right. Lack of knowledge. Because we lack even simple knowledge. So That's if we right. don't have gnosis, we definitely don't have super That's right. Epic epic gnosis. Gnosis. That's right. <laughs> so his people are destroyed for not even having the simplest of knowledge. That's right. That's why um, our people, the Israelites, are so easily overtaken by Satan. That's right. And his devices. That's right. And his devices. So now we're not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of his thought concepts of the mind. We're not ignorant. Okay, so basically. <clears throat> We have Satan's, um, the thought concepts of the mind. This is his devices, okay? So basically, we have um, Satan's thought concepts of the mind, these thoughts, these um, indoctrination that we receive. So now we're learning how to deal with Satan. You deal with him by dealing with your own thoughts. You deal with your own um, indoctrinations and, and doctrines that, that were... Um, that's not lining up with the scriptures, of course. Okay, now not just the scriptures because we have the, the ruach. Those of you that have the ruach, you got to be led of the ruach, the, and the ruach will guide you into all truth. So you just can't be have the scriptures. You need the ruach to guide you into this truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we understand what the weapons are for, and we're fighting against uh, <laughs> Satan now. Let's look at this, okay? I want to share this with you now. So now, we realize that the battle, the biggest part of that battle is here. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's in our own heads. Okay? 
It's in our own heads. We have to fight against our own self. Isn't that something? <laughs> against our own thoughts. <clears throat> now, I want to share this other um, thing with you here. Now, Satan, notice this here. I want you to think about this here. If you go to Revelations um, chapter 2. I know thy works, and I know where thou dwellest, even as, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name, and have not denied my faith. Even those, even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. <laughs> now, <laughs> did y'all did y'all get that? You hear what he said there? You hear what he said? Where Satan's seat is? <laughs> Where Satan see that? Among you. You hear that? <laughs> Think about what it's saying here. Satan's seat was right among the believers. Listen to what it said there. It says, I know that it works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Then he goes on and says that faithful martyr, um, uh, Antipas, the faithful martyr who was slaying a man you among you, where Satan dwelling? Satan mm -hmm. sitting up dwelling right among the believers. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Sitting up dwelling right among you. You see? That's bad. Yes, it is. That's bad. Satan shouldn't be dwelling among you. You know why? Because you should have, it should be so much power among you <clears throat> with the with the ruach. That's why you praise him. That's why you praise him. You praise him and you and you get in the word and you sing praise to Yah because Satan don't like this stuff. He yeah. gets up out it. He don't like you to talk about judgment. You get to talking about judgment and hellfire coming in the last days and how the most high gonna judge Satan and his angels. He get up out of it. He don't want to hear that stuff. <laughs> yeah, he don't like to dwell among the priests because Scripture right. says Yah inhabits. That's right, Yah. Praises of his. That's people. right. So if we're praising him, Yah inhabits the praises of his people. You see, hey, the Scripture said it. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. See, if you don't know this, then Satan will be sitting right among you. And that's something. Mm -hmm. Right among you, doing what? What you think he was doing? Get get this here. He said Antipas was a faithful martyr who was slain among you. 